Now, one of my favorite things to do on private land is create a buck bedding area. And you know, totally different on public land, you're trying to find those buck bedding areas. And when you're working with even a few hundred acres or 40 acres, 20 acres, you can't often say, well, we'll just leave the habitat the way it is, bucks are gonna bed here. You know, again, on public land, you can use ten th tens of thousands of acres and you go find it. You find food sources that are consistent during certain times of the year during October, November, December, whatever it might be. And then you find the bedding areas that relate to that and does. And then by the time you get back a little ways, you'll find buck bedding areas and that's public land. Private land, you wanna sandwich that concept into small areas. And especially in a location like this where we wanna have doe bedding near distant food sources, whether they're down below or up high. And then that creates an area like this for mature buck bedding. This way we have a food source that's about 150 yards away and it gets bigger after that for about a half mile, bigger food sources. Right down below, major food source. Distant that way food source. We start getting in an area like this where there's food sources in the distance up high and down below, but we don't have anything right here. What does that equal? It equals an opportunity for buck bedding. Those does and fawns, family groups will bed closer to those food sources. I call it layered bedding. And then once you get back in here deep and remote in these locations where we're four or 500 yards away from major food sources, then you get the buck bedding opportunity. So then what do you do? Well, there's a couple different types of cuttings that we've used in this location to increase the value for bucks to bed here. Now, if it's all open timber, those bucks don't have any kind of thermal protection. They don't have that hardwood browse and regeneration that they demand during the daylight hours. So in this case right here, on this side of the ridge, it's south facing. And so we've chosen to create big holes in the canopy where you see those clouds right there. You see another pocket right over here. We've chosen to create those big holes so that right down here, in here, we get a ton of sunlight in here. So over about a half acre, three quarter acre area, we get a lot of sunlight coming to the ground and we're increasing regeneration, which equals browse, deer feed five times in a 24 hour period. So that means those pocket cuttings are gonna produce browse during the daylight hours where deer demand that browse and hardwood regeneration, briar, shrub tips. We left a lot of oak, so there's acorn production, which is a complement to the browse. It can't be the browse itself because it's limited during the deer season. We want bucks to bed here for the entire season. That means it'll be consistent. We can plan out because we have a stand about 150 yards that way and one 100 yards this way. So we wanna consistently plan on bucks bedding in here. We also screened off this edge right out here going towards the field. You have about an acre and a half of switchgrass where you see the side by side up there. So we're really confining a corner in here where bucks can bed. Sorry to interrupt, but we have a lot going on with this food plot and many more. I can't wait to plant this. Check out what we're planting on WHS Wildlife Blends. All 12 of our blends are out. You can order bulk seed, buckwheat, and rye. Check it out. We have a new website. Click on seed on the whitehabitatsolutions.com. It'll take you right to the the new blend site. Appreciate you for checking it out and taking the time to watch us. We were talking about creating a buck bedding area and hunting it. I'll get to the hunting part here in a second. And this will relate to whether you're finding a, a bedding area on public land or you're creating it on private land. We've chose to create these pockets right here so we get sunlight to the ground, increase regeneration. So bucks have something to munch on during the daylight. They require that, they have to have that. It doesn't mean you have to have quality food. We don't have to have apple trees out here in theory. A buck could get out of a bed, feed on some fruit trees, never leave during daylight. He wouldn't have to, he'd have quality food. We don't want quality food. I don't want a little food plot back here in this location because food displaces buck bedding. Food attracts does and fawns. We build a food plot back here. We might have a doe and fawn back here for a family group that's here every day and bucks won't bed there. And believe it or not, bucks aren't attracted to does and fawns, especially in their bedding areas all the time. So. We haven't finished just by creating these pockets right here. Now back over here, we have popple. Aspen, popple regeneration. You get about 7,000 shoots per acre. So in this location, we're not completing a timber harvest here. To find someone to cut in, to cut out about 30 popple here and about 30 popple down there, we're not gonna find someone to do that and find a logger. We don't have enough appreciable timber value out here. It's a little bit different when you have a logger coming in because then you can say, do this here, do that there. We'll create a buck bedding here, general timber stand improvement somewhere else. This is an area right here where we want buck bedding, we want a bedding area. So in this case, 
with this aspen, we're not removing it. What that means is it's going to scatter everywhere. So someone that works with me, Joel, who's a, a pro timber cutter, you know, I've cut on 25, 30 days for clients in one year. But that doesn't make me a pro. Joel is the type of person that's cut on power lines 250 days a year just in one year. And so his ability to get trees to go where they're not supposed to go is phenomenal. He's a true pro. So we took all the timber here, pushed it that way. That allows the sunlight from the field edge to come in. Then we took all the popple back here, cut it that way. That allows for another pocket of sunlight right here. So different type of cutting where we're taking this timber that's really high stem count per acre, we're throwing a lot that way. Now what's great about this poplar, it breaks down quickly. So we expect deer to be able to move through these logs and tops here once it breaks down a little bit. But bottom line is you get 7,000 shoots per acre here. So this is all hidden pretty quickly and it's all food. Great spot for grouse, great spot for rabbits, great spot on the edge back there, out, on the outside out there for turkey nesting and really increasing our turkey population. So it's a, it's a big picture all around. Here we're pocket cutting, more random cuttings to allow sunlight to come in. Here, direct cutting where we're piling timber this way, piling timber this way. And then it'll even about a 15 yard gap through here. And this is where it gets into the hunting aspect of it. Sorry, it took a long time to get there. We have a reveal on the tray right here that allows to watch this area. We have a water hole 150 yards that way and we have another stand about 100 yards this way. So we can hunt around this without actually getting in here the most of the time. We come in those for evening hunts and not spook something up here that's sitting here all day long, waiting to start to move and go to a food source in the afternoon. The reveal camera will tell us what's going on here. And you can see we put the reveal camera on a white oak. It's a lot wider, wider than the camera. We've chose to put this camera, it's about five and a half feet high right here. And that gets it out of the, the visual line of a deer. And then there's a lot of brush on the side here which, help, which helps break up the profile. So this camera is very well hidden. The deer won't have any clue it's there. This corridor we left, deer will freely move back and forth through here. And then with the branches above, we'll be able to hang a nice long vine. They'll come right down here for a mock scrape so we can watch every movement on the top of this ridge or going side to side through this opening that leads to the other stand location all summer and into the fall long, and especially during the fall long, that's where it's critical. The honey aspect now. This is an area where because there's no food, we can get in here well before daylight and get into a stand location. The wind going that way drops right off. It's a northwest wind. That's our north wind, northwest winds right off the top of here. It's our great hunting season winds where the temperature changes. Yeah, that big cold front morning, you slip in here, and then we have this big beautiful oak right here where we can put a stand right up above. We can walk right down this trail, get in here, or right in the back side of the bedding area. We expect bedding to take place all throughout this area. And then we can blow our scent off the ridge completely in the morning hours and make sure that we can sit here till early afternoon and not spook deer. Now the beauty of sitting in a spot like this is we can look around and see where deer are at if we want to get out at 11 o'clock or one o'clock in the afternoon. We can see where deer are at in this location and then make our exit quick and get out of here when we see the coast is clear, whether we're getting out 11, noon, or one. Really good, outstanding morning location that we've made better by creating an actual buck bedding area in this location. Added the reveal to watch everything that's happening here. We don't expect a lot of use during the summertime because there's gonna be a lot of thick regeneration. Bucks don't wanna smash their velvet into that. But this is how we've set up this entire area to not only have this morning stand location right here that'll be really easy to sneak into, but also an afternoon, evening slash morning stand water hole over there. This stand over here, it's at the top of a steep ditch that goes down where deer cross along that top. So we have a stand over there, stand down there, this one in the morning. We can hunt any wind in this location, morning and evening, with those three stand locations, the water hole, the pinched movement over here, the bedding area stand for pure mornings. We've got this corner really well covered now. The switchgrass helps out there. And this is what you try to do during a, a public land morning bedding area hunt. You know, if you're seeing that you have food sources in the distance, could even be bait piles in some states, but you're getting back into the remote corners. It doesn't matter if it's a high ridge or a low area, low valley. 
If the food's up top, those bucks will bed down low. If the food's on the bottom, they'll bed up high, like in this case, or to the side, like in this case. So we have double food sources to throw deer back into this location. But you're still trying to find those food sources, recognize within a quarter mile, half mile, 200 yards, whatever it might be, where those bucks could potentially bed. And then you're looking at a path of least resistance, get on this downwind edge of the bedding source, which would be right here, sneaking in here in the morning hours, getting up that tree and see what happens. You can scout it, find it on public land, look for those details of doe bedding, food source, and then buck bedding. Food, does, bucks in that order. Or in this case, on private land, actually create it and wait for them to come. But you can bet we can't wait to not only get pictures here and video, HD video, with the reveal as the months pass leading into the season, but also to finally take a sit when we can do so. Probably, I would imagine, unless we're getting some good intel back here, it's gonna be a late October, crispy, toe-numbing morning, and it's gonna be a hot spot on a cool morning to see some mature bucks, and we can't wait. It takes a lot of detail and preparation for a spot like this where you put in a lot of boot time on public land or you create it on private land, but the wait will be worth all the hard work whether scouting, boot time, or actually some physical work getting this installed when it comes time for that magical morning this fall. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitehabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site, for the seed company, we have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.